I hope that you've been doing things that can help increase your health, increase your expansion of consciousness. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we li- we are indeed living in a hell world. What's really interesting, however, is that we, we although we live in a hell world, we also have the ability through great states of health and an enlightenment process known as Kundalini. We have the ability, folks, to actually attain what's known as Christhood by the Gnostics, and we have the ability to enter into or into heaven consciousness, so to speak. So we live in a weird world where we're where this dimension, this physical world, is a realm where you can experience heaven, hell, and purgatory. Purgatory, for those who don't know, is kind of like a a realm in between heaven and hell. It's where you're stuck. So I'm not really going to get into that in this video, folks, but I am going to say that we do live in a crazy world. And because of that, it's really important that you take care of your health. I don't just get on here and rant about these things because I just have nothing else to do. I'm aware of the fact that our health is under assault. I'm aware of the fact that our genome is under an assault. And I'm aware of the fact that the upper echelons, these secret societies and these control grids are the secret societies and the organizations and the controllers that run everything here in the matrix. I'm aware of the fact that they understand you on a very genetic subatomic level. They have, they have succeeded in the bastardization of your cell cells, plural. You have about a hundred trillion cells give or take, depending on who you ask. It's my opinion that we have over a hundred trillion cells, but that's besides the point. They have mastered the polluting and the damaging of the human cell. So I've said this once and I'll say it again. The human cell consists of many parts known as organelles, ladies and gentlemen. So you have a cell wall, you have cell fluid. I'll show you in just a minute on my screen capture, but inside of the cell, you have things that are known as organelles and organelles essentially means little organs. Your cells are comprised of a vast ecosystem of living parts, including, but not limited to your mitochondria, your lysosomes, the nucleus, the genetic material inside the nucleus, you name it. So this is how mind control works to a large extent. They attack you and they reroute the health of your entire cellular matrix so that the basic fundamental building blocks of who you are are not aligned and working properly. They've significantly decreased the efficiency at which the mitochondria within your cells produces energy. Your mitochondria are kind of basically in layman's terms, the engine of your cells. They provide energy. And they've significantly, through the bastardized foods that they've fed us at a, from a very young age and all of the other genetic material or manipulation, excuse me, that they've done to us, they've significantly lowered the efficiency of the, uh, the cellular ecosystem so that in doing so, the basic fundamental building pro- blocks of who we are don't work efficient. Yeah, I can't speak today. They've essentially dumbed down the basic building blocks of who we are. And by doing so, due to the fact that we have an intimate connection with those essential building blocks, our cells, they built, they're essentially what we're made of folks. They have taken us out of alignment because they've made the cells plural, very unhealthy. They've made them not run efficiently. So the cell, ladies and gentlemen, of the human being with an individual or when an individual is experiencing Christ consciousness, also known as Kundalini gnosis or enlightenment, the entire cell becomes illuminated. The organelles get hyper stimulated and become something much greater than they actually are now. They regain their, their vibrancy. They regain their health. They become something much different. The cells of the human being currently are like a, it's like a colony of a hundred trillion Ford Pintos. In an enlightened individual, the cells are like a advanced spaceship. The cells are a very, very important part to us becoming illuminated, to us becoming enlightened, ladies and gentlemen. They are the fundamental building blocks of who we are. So let's take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, on screen capture. We have here a human cell. We have all of these pieces to a human cell. And all of these pieces have very specific functions. This aspect or these parts of our cells that are known as organelles react to the food that we consume. Ladies and gentlemen, they react to our thoughts. They also just to dovetail this in folks, the human cell, and there's 
hundreds of thousands of these in your body. They make up who you are. They're the fundamental building blocks of who you are. Our cells react to the positioning of our assemblage point. Now, I don't really have time to go into exactly what the assemblage point is in this video. I've discussed it in a handful of previous videos here on my Patreon page. Please, if you're interested in learning more about the assemblage point, go back and look through my archive. I have probably five or six videos where the core message of what I'm trying to teach is you know, discussing the assemblage point. You can also pick up a book called The Art of Dreaming by Carlos Castaneda. And in that book, Don Juan Mattis, Don Juan Mattis, the Yaqui Indian sorcerer that is found throughout many of Carlos's books, discusses in detail exactly what the assemblage point is, what its function is, how it works, and how it relates to human health and our ability to break past the barriers of the electromagnetic spectrum and in doing so regain our enlightenment so that we are not <clears throat> living in a perception prison of sorts. I hope that makes sense. The assemblage point in layman's terms, just to really briefly expound upon it or describe it, um, the assemblage point is a very specific part of our electromagnetic field, our energetic field, our aura that dictates how our perception actually operates. So the thing about the assemblage point is it can move based on experiences in our life. Certain things can happen to us that move the positioning, traumas, certain uh, exposure to certain foods, exposure to certain belief systems can actually take the assemblage point and reposition it. And in the process of it be, being repositioned, your perception changes. So to wrap things up in a state of enlightenment, ladies and gentlemen, your assemblage point is torn free from where it currently is and put into a completely different position. And because of that, you are allowed to see past your blinders. When the Kundalini energy moves through your system, it forcibly moves the assemblage point to a new position where you can actually see more of and interact with more of the electromagnetic spectrum. Our assemblage point as a collective entity, the collective consciousness, most people's, most people, excuse me, their assemblage point is in a very fixed position. And due to the positioning of their assemblage point, they can only see reality through a very narrow gap. And that's why people are mind controlled. Now, on top of the assemblage point being moved, we also have as a form of mind control, the cellular system within our biology, within our physiology, our entire cellular makeup has been polluted and damaged. They've especially gone after this particular region right here, folks, that I am circling right now on the screen, which is your mitochondria. This is in layman's terms, the energy producer or the engine of the cell. But... I, some of these things may not make sense. Unfortunately, with my videos, you kind of have to go back and watch older videos to what, to make sense of what I'm talking about. If you are new to this, this page and you haven't watched old, older videos, you've kind of got to take some time and really get familiar with my content to make sense of some of these terms I'm using. But the assemblage, the assemblage point and its position dictates how the cell operates because when the assemblage point is moved into a new position, ladies and gentlemen, uh, through the Kundalini forcing it into a new position, the cell operates in a much different way. It becomes hyper illuminated. All of these point are pieces of the cell actually becomes uh, hyper stimulated and actually changes its function in their activity. Um, so I just want to briefly wrap up the assemblage point stuff and make sense of it. Um, let's see here, folks, make sure I'm recording. I wanted to just say that the assemblage point, for those who don't know, in very layman's terms, is a particular piece of our aura, if you want to call it that. It's a part of our electromagnetic energy field, our subtle organizing energy field. We have around us, ladies and gentlemen, multiple layers of energy that encompass our body. It, these energy fields coalesce and oscillate around us and hold our organs together. They pump light in through the different dimensions into our body and into our meridians to keep us healthy. There are so many different functions to our energy field or what I like to call our auric shield that I don't have time to get into now. But part of the overall blueprint, folks, of the human aura or the electromagnetic field, the subtle organizing energy fields, whatever you want to call it that, there is a specific part known as the assemblage point, And it dictates how our energy field, the overall energy field, interacts with the, the, the dimension that we're in. And it also affects how our organs operate. 
the velocity of our thoughts, the speed of our thoughts, it dictates based on its position because, again, it can move. And based on how it moves, it dictates our perception based on where it's located. <clears throat> again, I hope these things make sense and I'm not just blabbering. But um, the assemblage point is a particular part of our energy field that dictates how much of the electromagnetic spectrum we can see and interact with. That would be the easiest, most layman's way of uh, describing it. It's like a governor on a vehicle. A governor on a vehicle, for those who don't know, is a part, I think it's inside of the motor. Uh, it might be part of the car's elect electrical system that f dictates how fast you can bring a car up to speed. Most new cars, my mom's Honda and as well as her, uh, her Acura, Currently, she used to have a Honda that had a governor, and she currently has an Acura that has a, a governor, but her Honda could only get up to about 105, 110 um, miles per hour. When the governor was it was removed, it could go, it could exceed those limits. That's kind of like what the assemblage point does. When it's fixed in a position, your perception is fixed in a per certain way of perceiving based on where its position is fixed. The assemblage point likes to get, it likes to get fixed in certain positions but it can move. And there are ways that we can go about attempting to get it to move. One way we do that is by going into our inner temple and doing the inner, inner temple exercise that I talk about often here on the Patreon page. Links are in the description box below. But um, I wanna wrap that up, but I also wanna just kinda give you a brief definition. I always forget that I have this here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, we can say, kind of like a mock energy field. So. If my finger was a human being standing upright in the middle of this, so imagine that my finger, not my hand and all this other nonsense, imagine that my finger standing upright is a human being. Around that human being is a three-dimensional fourth, fifth, and fourth and fifth dimensional energy field that we can no longer see or interact with anymore, ladies and gentlemen, based on our programming and based on the repositioning and programming of our assemblage point. So you can think of the this object here as our complete energy field. Let's just pretend that that's a Merkaba. Let's pretend that this is the Merkaba, the aura, all the different subtle layers of the human energy field. Within this energy field, there's a very fixed, there's a very specific part called the assemblage point, and it dictates how we interact with this shield. And right now, it's in a position, the assemblage point, where we don't even know we have an energy field. We have lost our damned minds, ladies and gentlemen. We have literally lost our damn minds. We are no longer who we were designed to be. And that's a huge problem. And I'll leave that there for a while. Things really cool. I've experienced states of consciousness where I've been given glimpses of the truth of who we were designed to be. And we were much more, we were designed to be much more than we were, that we're currently exhibiting. That's all I will say. But the cell, ladies and gentlemen, like I was saying, these parts right here, these get affected by the positioning of our assemblage point. These parts of our cell get affected by the foods that we eat. And last but not least, and there's, you know, not, let me just rephrase that. There are so many different ways that our cells get unhealthy and the health of the cell dictates the health of the human. It also health dictates the health of the mind, regardless of what doctors want to tell you. The doctors think that the mind is completely separate from the body, pretty much. The mind is intimately connected to the body. The health of the body largely dictates the health of the mind. It's not the entire picture, or it's not the entire piece to, it's not the entire, the hell is the word, what's the word I'm looking for? There's much more to it than that, I'll put it that way. But the health of the body largely dictates the health of the mind. Clean body equals clean mind. Clean mind equals clean body. Um, but there's much more to it than that. We have to take into account the reality of the energy field. Taking care of your physical health is one thing, but we need a surefire way to get back into our energy field, into our Merkaba, into our aura, so that we can regain the codes to our divinity and escape this matrix. I wanted to personally thank you for watching my videos and contributing to the growth of my channel. I could not do this without you, and your interest in my content is truly what motivates me and fuels my passion for making these videos and spreading my message. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to remind you that this channel is a free educational tool that is listener supported, and if you would like to donate to my channel and donate to my cause, 
help make my life a little bit easier and help keep the lights on around here, you can do so by checking out the links in the description box below. There's a handful of not only ways to donate to my channel, but I also have links to different websites and different videos of mine, as well as my Amazon store, where you can check out a handful, a plethora of different health-related products that I use and recommend. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for your continued interest in my message and until next time, peace be with you all.